start things now with T Drogo going up against Massa. That's right, it's Europe going up against North America here to find out who is moving on into the round of eight. One could say, Roddy, the two worlds are going to collide. Absolutely, I mean, uh, these worlds have collided before. Mm. These are actually two players that ran into each other twice at the most recent home story cup, which is barely a month ago. And the very first series, Drogo was pretty dominant. I think he won 3-0. The second series, however, Massa won 3-0. Right. That's not something you see very often, because in which world does it make sense? You just beat a guy 3-0 that you just lost to 3-0. <laughs> but this has a lot to do with the temperament that Drogo has. Drogo is widely regarded as one of the better European pros players. Obviously, he's the champion of Dreamhack Leipzig, but we all know that he can go, as we like to say, on tilt. On tilt, indeed. Here are our two players, of course. It's Petit Drogo to the right and Massa to the left here, representing Elevate and My Insanity, respectfully. Uh, uh, Nathanius, both of these players throughout 2016, they've had some pretty good highs, to say the least, but at the same time, they've had their lows as well. Yeah, Masa has been a player that I've had a lot of fun watching because, you know, for the last few years commentating matches, he, he bottomed out a lot. He was a player who had really, really good performances here and there, but he was grossly inconsistent. And right, I, I kept right. asking myself this year, I'm like, why do I keep seeing him so much? Because I, I honestly didn't feel like he had been able to hit his stride just yet. But he's it's really not just like he got so much better. He just a little bit more consistent in his play. Like, he's not been as weak. He hasn't had as many vulnerabilities. Um, I'm still waiting to see him reach the next level, but, yeah. you know, all of these performances, all of these runs he's been making have caught me off guard, and I think it's been an awesome year for him, uh, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, he started off his year with a, I think it was a 9th through 16th for WCS winter, but then he actually picked it up quite a lot, getting third and fourth places at Austin, as well as WCS spring. So that was pretty good, Valdez. Yeah, I mean, to echo what you guys are saying, he, he definitely shows a lot of potential. One of these players that's be we're beginning to see him a lot more nowadays. And I'm just wondering, when is he going to hit that stride where he, he becomes someone yeah. like Hydra, someone like Pold, someone who's, you know, like Nurtio, up at the top, yeah. top tier of these foreigners trying to, you know, hit their stride and get those wins. I mean, is, is this the tournament for, tournament for him? I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. How close is the series, boys? We're getting rapidly into this very quickly. I mean, obviously it is close because they have beat each other multiple times, mm. but I do think that Drogo is the favorite. I think mm. overall he's been the slightly better player, even though those top fours that Massa had, those were tremendous runs, and that's something you can be very proud of. To put things in perspective, Massa actually got invited to Montreal because that's how many WCS points he's right, already yeah. collected throughout the year, but I still feel that PV currently I think Drogo's had plenty of time to work on what used to be his weakest matchup this is something that's not nice to say but Dreamhack Leipzig was covered a little bit he had very weak PVT back then yep. but PVT was ridiculously imbalanced the moment that the uh, adepts got nerfed a little bit he struggled you know notably quite a bit more but I do feel that over time he's got better in the matchup and I mean you know if, if Drogo who obviously aspires to be one of the absolute best in Europe if you want to be that guy, you got to win here. All right. Well, thank you very much, boys. We are heading into our next round of 16, best of five here between Petit Drogo and Massa. I'm giving it over to the Frenchman. It is Todd and Funker. Thank you very much, guys. Very excited here for this one as our fellow Frenchman, T. Drogo, is going to take on the, the Gosu Terran Massa from Canada. Let's jump into it here. We're already in map number one, and we're going to be playing on Galactic Process here for this one. Yeah, let's see. Drogo always has troubles in the first round, so let's see how he does this time against Massa. In the bottom left, as our Terran player hailing from Canada, it is Massa. I've heard you get louder, so I'm going to let you warm louder? up a little bit more and actually do this one too. Should I do this one? Yeah. From France, representing my insanity, the Protoss player in the top right, it is Petit Drogo. Whatever happened to the top right? <laughs> it's top right. <laughs> Just yeah. top right. Top right. <laughs> I really like when you do that before. <laughs> I um, do it for the second game. Don't worry. I, I got to talk with Drogo. You know, he faced Massa twice at the last Home Story Cup, and uh, as much as he was very successful in the first series that he played against Massa, he lost the second one. Oh. The SCV barely getting away. Oh my God. Gonna be able to get out of there for now. But yeah, Drogo won the first series against Massa back then, but lost the, the important one, the second one for the qualify, uh, qualifying match in that group. So he got out of the tournament and wasn't very happy about it. He kind of really tilted, you know, from losing to Snoot in the winner's match to losing to Massa in the final match that he had already beat. So I think he's going to want to look to make some adjustments. I spoke with him and he actually said some surprising stuff to me. He said that he thought, he, he thought that Massa had not the best macro. 
I was like, I can't believe you just said that. Like, if he had known you said that, he would have been so mad. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then he added that um, he thought that playing very aggressive against Maza is the way to go, which to some extent I agree with. What do you think? So I've got two things to talk about right now. It's first of all, Drogo has a problem when things get really, uh, really important. Like first yeah. rounds, when uh, he goes into the deciding match, he always gets a little bit stressed out. So that's the adjustment that he has to do, is you know being a little bit uh, calmer, I guess. Um, in terms of what he said about his macro, I would tend to agree on one point. Massa always forgets his armory. So his 2-2 two -two timing, yeah. timings in general, it's not as important it's, uh, in a PVT, but in TVZ he always misses the 2-2, two, <laughs> the, the two -two, you know? It's so, so we'll funny. See. You know, like in school, like people will be like, oh, you're ugly and stuff. Like in StarCraft, the insults is like, oh, you have terrible macro. <laughs> you always forget your armory. I you can't have a terrible you just said that. Like we're not friends ever <laughs> anymore. But yeah, Drogo, like he had a very strong opinion about this. And uh, he told me that he thinks that Maza gambles a lot, build otherwise. And uh -huh. I think by that, every Protoss pretty much means like, in case of a third command center, he's seen as a gamble. Because if you play very aggressive, you really can punish that a lot of the time. Yeah. So aggression is, I think here, what it might be in the plans for Drogo, as it often is, but uh, with the Stargate opener, usually what we see from this is a very quick third Nexus, so potentially a little bit more of a macro... Actually, okay, now we see double more gates. Okay, so it's, gates. it's already diverting from that here, that, of what I just talked about. So we should see an Oracle to just check out what's going on, having some detection, like, we, we can talk about that, like, there is no Robo in this build, so he needs to get something, and there's a factory and a stop. Yeah, Massa is Massa's base. He's anticipating aggression, I guess, right? Like, mm -hmm. when, you, when you get that, it means you're afraid somebody will attack, maybe you go for Blink or Adepts, and in this case, Ooh. getting a tank, then a Cyclone, he's going to be fairly safe back at home against anything that can be thrown at him. And he didn't go for the gamble of the third command center, but Drogo, so far, is kind of winning that mind game, because not only he's open Stargate, and I think he's going to be all right in the situation, but he made double gates to hold any kind of attack. And the very quick third Nexus anyway here with this. Okay, so if the defense is good there, he's going to be in good position. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see about the defense though, because that's a pretty scary push that's coming in. Oh! oh! First Oracle getting a lot of damage done. You can see the, the medivac, and in this medivac, if you've seen, there is three SCVs, so he's going to try to bunker rush and probably repair the tank. So first overcharge is getting used. Oh my god! The Mothership Core might go down! Oh! That was terrible for Drogo. Drogo has been known to get upset very fast in this kind of situation. He's going to have to keep his calm here. Starts another Oracle. He still sent the other run Oracle across the map, which died against the okay. Cyclone. That's terrible. What a horrible start for Drogo here. He's in so much trouble. It couldn't have been worse, actually. Like, he lost everything. He lost the Mothership Core. I don't think he restarted it. Now oh, the it tanks is dealing a lot of damage. It's getting worse now. He's pulling probes. He's pulling probes, and he lost the Oracle on the other side of the map. So he's not doing any damage to the economy of Massa whatsoever. So it's already starting to look really grim for the French products. Yeah, 27 armies supply to 11 right yeah, now. That's not good news, especially since Rogo, all he's got right now is Stalkers. The Cyclone gonna go across the map. There's not much to counter it here. If anything at all, an Oracle comes out. He's gonna pull the probes and move in there to try and get a good defense, but there is a Liberator, the Cyclone can be pulled back, there is a Bunker as well with this, and Drogo's losing everything. Yeah, he's losing everything, but he did take out the Liberator on this one, and the tech is gonna get saved, only 7 HP on this one. Two Stalkers are the only thing that remains for Drogo. 40 supply against 69. Drogo is pausing the game for some reason. Okay, hotkeys apparently. But yeah, he's in a terrible, terrible spot right you now. Know, this Mr. Bitter was there, he definitely said, I don't know, Kev, it's not looking all that good right now for Drogo because he's got 31 probes with three Nexus. He didn't cancel the Nexus in the midst of all this, mm -hmm. which I think is one of the biggest mistakes. He needed those minerals to maybe make more gates, make more units, and make sure he has a better chance at holding. But already losing the Mothership Core alone is like the absolute worst thing that can happen in this situation. It did happen there. And I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about how this guy is very emotional. And when yeah. he starts going south, he gets very obsessed, uh, upset. Mm -hmm. This is looking like here. He might not be happy uh, from the first map. He's in so much trouble. Massa is on 69 supply to 40. Like this game, I really feel like there's not too long uh, left before Drogo is going to have to exit it. Yeah, probably because, yeah, the tank's still alive. The Cyclone's do still doing work. And that that's the thing, right? Like, yes. And you could see on the camera, like, he actually punched the table because he's so, so frustrated with his play right now. Like, he, he missed some critical positioning with the Mothership Core. He lost some units freely. Yeah. And at the same He's time, you speaking. lose an Oracle to a Cyclone? It's He's like talking out loud, man. Yeah. It's a good thing we, don't, we didn't mic up this booth because 
there would be a lot of French words, but not the good ones, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's see if he can do something here. He's getting the Cyclone, which is already a good start. Some Marines still there. Okay, the Micro is pretty decent by, by Drogo, but that tank with 10 HP still doing some work. Already 11 kills, and those are not Zerglings. They are Protoss units. Okay, uh, can he do something with the... With the with the photon overcharge right there. No, 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 no. It's gonna be GG. It's gonna be GG. GG. Massa taking the first game so easily on this one. Man. Perfect build and perfect defense against the I played to his image pretty well. I think um, most likely Massa was anticipating Drogo to think there was gonna be a, a third command center that he often went for uh -huh. in the last song story cup in the second series that they played. So he played the reverse mind game. Basically, he said, if you're gonna expect me to go for that, I'll make units. If you attack me, I'll have these units to defend. If you don't attack me and play greedy, I'll have them to attack you. And in this case, it works out perfectly as Drogo just kind of, you know, crumbles under the pressure, initially loses the Mothership Core, and then from there, there is just, I mean, too much, right? If you're able to siege, Photon of a Charge doesn't work like it used to in Heart of the Swarm. It's not the Nexus shooting like three screens away against siege tanks <laughs> that can't even shoot at the Nexus. And in this case, after that, like, you just you just crumble. I don't think you can do much, right? Yeah, it was probably the worst game to start this series off for uh, Drogo. Lots of stuff going uh, the wrong way, lots of micro mistakes, and uh, especially like the build that Massa used. We talked about it uh, during the dinner yesterday, and, uh, and he talked to me about how it was the flavor of the week when it started. Like Maru was the first one to use it. I think Gumio also did it uh, on Frozen Temple back in the days. And everybody would use that on ladder and everybody would lose to it. And he said that you can make a slight adjustment like cutting some probes, getting your two more gateways a little bit in advance, but you still have to micro properly. And that wasn't the case for Drogo right there. I like that he pulled the probes really early but losing the Mothership Core, losing the Oracle, yeah. that's, that's just way too much. That Nexus had to be a cancel. Like, if you think about it...